Hello my friends, I am Sarah from gracemyspace.com. Welcome back. Today we're doing part two of my small series on how to find your decorating style. Today we are getting into how to actually put what you figured out in our last video into action in your home. So if you did not watch the first video, I'll pop it right up here, go tap on it, watch that one first because I actually define some of the most popular decorating styles, over a dozen of them in layman's terms so that I think it's pretty easy to understand. There's some visuals in there and I hope that it's really helpful for you to kind of get this background mindset in place before we dive into today's video. Now in that video, I had mentioned that there is so much more to decorating than just putting a pillow on a couch. I think that it's really more intentional. It has more of a haven making mindset and that's why I wrote a book about it. And my book is all about really practical ways to take your decorating style and implement it into your home. One of the first mistakes that people make is thinking that Decorating your home is all about looks. It really can be, but I don't think it should be. If you're really meeting your family's needs, then your home decor should actually serve a purpose. So to start us out, I want you to do something that's really practical. Act like you're buying a house. What is the wish list that you would put together for your family to buy a house? Maybe you need three bedrooms, two bath. Maybe you need an office because somebody works at home. Maybe you need a large backyard because you really value being outdoors. Maybe you need an indoor hot tub. I mean, if you miss my home tour, you know there's some meaning there. Now once you have your set of needs, you can then evaluate what about my home does not meet those needs. It's not like we can just all go out and buy new houses as soon as our house isn't fitting our needs. So instead we need to come up with creative ways to take what we have and turn it into what we need. So the next step is evaluating the problems. Maybe a problem you have is that you are craving light and airy spaces and your home feels dungeonish. That's a problem we can fix. Maybe your problem is that for a long time you fell in love with a certain style, but now you're kind of changing and that's very normal. It's a really normal process in design to have, to have an evolving design style and so we can solve that problem too. Maybe your problem is that your kitchen is really outdated, it's not meeting your needs in a functional way, we can solve that problem too. We can solve all of those problems, big and small, with the same design process. Now what do I mean when I say the design process? I'm gonna walk you through several steps that are just really straightforward and practical to help you solve those problems within your home, whether they're big or small. But it's gonna look different for everybody and everybody's gonna have different answers to this step-by-step -step process. And that is one of the things that I love most about design is that it is so personal and it is practical and it can be a creative solution for a wide variety of problems if we take the time to evaluate it in kind of this more process-oriented mentality. The next step is to set some realistic expectations. This is a step that a lot of people kind of glance over and they think, oh, we'll just make it work. That is gonna set you up for failure if you don't have realistic expectations for your timeline, for your budget, for your material sourcing, for your actual needs. Because if you haven't really stopped to think through, okay, I, I need a new kitchen and I need it by next week. Obviously that's not gonna work. So just making sure that you're setting yourself up for success in your mind by setting realistic expectations is the really important first step. Another thing you should be realistic about is your own ability. So. I tackle lots of DIYs and I am not always realistic about my own ability. <laughs> Sometimes it flops and that's fine and I can call on somebody to help me finish the project. Other times I can make it work, but if you are not an avid DIYer, just have the mentality in mind that it's gonna be a learning process 
as you tackle these tasks. It might not be straightforward, it might be messy, and that's okay. All of that can be part of developing your skill set. All right, the next step is the one that gets to be really fun. So you have all these plans in your mind, you know the direction you wanna head, but you aren't really sure, number one, maybe what your decorating style really kind of falls into out of those 12 or so that we talked about in the first video, or you might just not know how to take that and plop it in your home. And this step is gonna help you practically make that happen. So I want you to go to Pinterest. All Pinterest is is like a visual Google. It's a search tool that allows you to see images based on your keywords. If you haven't created an account, it's very easy to do. Once you've done that, you just start setting up your boards. Think of it like a cork board. I'm gonna take you and walk you through my Pinterest account for some of my spaces that I have created these vision boards for. I've done it room by room or category by category. So I have like a fall decorating category, I have a Christmas category, I have some of those seasonal elements that I wanna key in on. I also have boards for every room in the home. The second option for categorizing them is to create a board to solve each of the problems that you defined. So maybe your problem was home office issue. Create a board for creating home office vision casting. Everybody's needs are gonna be a little different. Some people are doing whole home renovations and so they need boards for every room. Other people are only focusing on one room or organization or paint colors or whatever the case may be. So whatever your individual problem is, create a board that you can start pinning to. Once you kind of have your boards organized, then you just start pinning. You need to pin at least 30 images to each board in order for you to get a really good grasp of the things that are speaking to you. I like to implement the stop and stare test. So when you're scrolling, you're just consuming dozens and dozens and dozens of images. If the image doesn't make you stop and look at it longer, stare at it, don't pin it. It's the ones that really make you pause that you want to pin and then you'll go back later and we'll talk about what to do with them. All right, now you have set your expectations, you have set realistic goals, you figured out some of the really specific design elements that you have fallen in love with that you wanna incorporate into your space. The next step is to edit. Now, what do I mean by editing? For some people, editing means going into their home and starting from scratch. Then there are the people who have a pretty streamlined style, but they're just kind of looking to change it up or they need to solve those specific problems. Your editing is gonna look very different. This is where I think most people are at, where they kind of have a pretty standard feel for their home, but they just wanna change some things up, they wanna meet a specific goal, etc. Those people are gonna walk through their home and just start taking things out that are not serving a purpose, that are not meeting a goal for them, that they just don't love anymore, or it's just not working. I am editing, I like to create four different piles, one to donate if I just really no longer love it, one to sell if I no longer love it, but it's worth something, a trash pile for things that are just broken, irreparable, or just plain trash, or a store for later, situation where maybe it's just not really working for you right now, but in the future it might. I will say that it can be really tempting to put everything in the fourth pile where you're gonna store it for later. If you don't love something, don't be afraid to give it up. So what does that look like practically? Let's take my fireplace as an example. I actually like everything in my fireplace right now. I just did it, but let's imagine that I didn't. We're gonna take these out. That simple edit opened up the space, it created a more airy feeling. It's a little bit more minimalistic now, so if I was going for the minimalist style, I would take that out. On here I have a vintage painting that's just been sitting there because I had it up here before, so it's time to store that. This jug is feeling kind of rocking. I'm not really going for that vibe, so I'm gonna take it out. And now you can see that with a simple edit of four items, I kind of created a whole new look for the space. It's less cluttered, it's more minimalistic, it shines more emphasis on the artwork, and it's less distracting. That's all I mean by editing. Your editing might be a lot more drastic than that, including like furniture pieces that are outdated for your style, etc. 
But all that it means is that you're taking the time to be intentional, to look at your space and change it by removing first. You'll add later. Once you have edited, the next step is to figure out what you wanna put in. So go back to your Pinterest boards and we're gonna break them down. Okay, now you have pinned all of your pins that you have fallen in love with through the process. And the next step is to go through and really identify what was speaking to you. Now your boards are going to be personalized for whatever your situation is, but I'm gonna use an example of perhaps a living room board. Let's imagine we're all looking at a living room Pinterest board. First, I want you to overview it. Look at all the images that we pinned. See if there are any common themes that you can pick out from the images. Maybe the first common theme you see is white couch. Maybe the second common theme you see is colorful walls. Maybe the third common theme that you see is minimal decor or vintage decor or pottery everywhere or plants everywhere. Whatever the main theme that you're seeing visually is, pick it out and write it down for yourself. Those recurring themes in the images are most likely what your eye is being drawn to. The next step is to say, okay, so I really love the way a white couch looks. Will it work for my family? Maybe you are in the stage of life where you have a bunch of infants or toddlers and you know that you're gonna be really frustrated by cleaning a white couch constantly. That's okay, you've got a couple options. You can either do a slip covered couch that's white, that's pretty easy to clean, or do a different color. Remember here that you are creating a life and a haven with your design style. So if you're putting things into your home that conflict with your lifestyle needs, you're not creating a haven. You're just creating a long-term problem. Okay, now that you have kind of written down all of the things that were really speaking to you, I want you to take a step back and pick five of them to include in your room or in your home. Start small because when you try to completely revamp a space from scratch, it's very overwhelming, it's very expensive, and it's also kind of unrealistic because a lot of times what happens is you add one new element to your room. It might completely change the way your space looks. And then those four other elements that you were really keying in on don't quite fit anymore. So take it one element at a time. Add them in slowly. Don't be afraid to take a while to get through this process because it's kind of a decor journey. It's a haven making process. It's not about going to your nearest department store and creating a furnished house in one fell swoop. So let's do a recap. This is the entire design process, but it's gonna look different for everybody. It's gonna take a different timeline for everybody. It's gonna take a different budget for everybody. And that's okay. That's just part of creating your haven. Define your needs, evaluate your problem, set realistic expectations to solve your problem, build out your design boards on Pinterest, define really specific elements that you're drawn to, and then evaluate if those elements are actually gonna meet your needs in your lifestyle. Be really realistic with your design choices, edit your home, and then start adding in new elements one by one until you have created something that you just really enjoy. It's really not a hard process, it's really basic when you think about it and you break it down into those steps. So many people tend to have this like paralyzation because they are constantly thinking, what if I don't like it? Well, my friends, if you don't like it, then you can change it. Return the item, repaint the wall, fix a mistake that you made. It is okay to have problems along the process because it is a continual learning experience and no one gets it right the first time. I think it is more important to start and to try something and to learn through the process than it is to be paralyzed by fear. And so I hope that this video has been helpful to just kind of break down the steps, give you some realistic expectations for how the design process looks. And then you can take what you kind of learned in the first video on how to figure out your decorating style, put it into implementation in your home using these steps, and you can create a haven that you love. I'm gonna link my book for you down in the description. It's a paperback or an ebook option. It includes a workbook to help you walk through all of these steps in a very organized and practical way. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope that you found it helpful. Make sure and share it if you did. Hit the like button, subscribe, do all the notification thingies, all those things. 
See you next time.